Should circumcision be banned, not just girls, but boys too? When a practice is defended as being religious in nature, does that make it in some way untouchable? Well, there's a bill before the Icelandic Parliament that would change the wording of the ban on female circumcision from girl to child. Supporters of the bill say it's simply a proper recognition of the right of all youngsters to make their own decisions about what happens to their bodies. Others are not so keen. Ahmed Sadiq is an imam at the Islamic Cultural Centre of Iceland. He says it would be completely wrong to criminalise circumcision. It's actually uh, part of our face. It's something uh, that touches our uh, religion and uh, I believe that this is kind of infringement, like our uh, contravention uh, to the religious freedom. Well, Celia uh, Gunes Dottir is uh, a politician from the Progressive Party in Iceland. She's the person who introduced the bill. Good morning to you. Yeah, good morning. Um, do you not recognise that um, religions have certain things that are desperately important to them, and in some cases, to some religions, male circumcision is one of those? Well, I understand what they're saying, but I don't agree with them. And I think that people should have equal rights to choose when they are old enough. So this bill is about protecting the children from unnecessary, non-reversible and sometimes risky procedures. And they can even be lethal, so that's why I put it forward. Um, when you talk about male circumcision, do all of those apply? Because um, huge numbers of people across the, the globe, huge numbers of male babies are circumcised with apparently um, little, if any, effect. Well, I think that a procedure, unnecessary procedure, if it goes wrong, uh, and one child dies of an unnecessary procedure, I think it's one child too many, I must say. And uh, we've heard from uh, the imam, uh, Ahmed Sadiq, a moment ago, as you know. I mean, there are, is there much opposition in Iceland apart from, uh, from the, those quarters? No, what I hear is that we have a great support. And uh, I wanted to tell you that the discussion has just started in the parliament and it will continue next week. And after that... Uh, the bill goes into the uh, committee and the committee researches the bill and, you know, gives their conclusions at the, at the end. So it, 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 we're it, just starting. It, it is interesting because it, this would be, I think I'm right in saying, the first parliament um, to do this. To, to Iceland would become the first country to pass a law uh, that um, specifies what you're just said, you, you, you just announced. Yeah, it will. And I want to tell you also the reason behind this, why I put it forward, is because I came over a statement from the Nordic Ombudsman from 2013, Ombudsman of Children, and where they are encouraging all the Nordic countries to ban the circumcision of boys because it goes against the UN Convention of the Right of the Child. So I'm really curious to see what happens and how, they, how the discussion in Iceland will continue. But you would expect opposition from uh, Islam, clearly. It, yeah, it was p to be expected. And I mean, it's just, I mean, everyone has the, has the right to uh, bring the, their opinion into a discussion. And that's very important. But we have to take this discussion and we have to decide if we want to have certain laws for one sex, for the girls, and no for the boys. I think they're both children and all children should have their own right individual right to choose but you would accept that there is a huge difference between the effect of female circumcision and male circumcision well uh, female circumcision is done in many stages it's not just one type of circumcision it can be really like rough and it can be minimal minimal but uh, like i said before the circumcision on boys it can include health risks and psychological damage and i think it's just like how our democratic states are based. Right. They are based on the individual right of informed information and their own rights to choose. And I think that we can't take it from the children when they're just a few days old or a few years old. All right, Celia Gunnarsdottir, thank you very much for talking to us.